your body on the land through your feet. That is your mother holding you. The mother of us all, of all mothers. And it's important to remember that because we are not separate. So we acknowledge this sacred, living, breathing, sentient, suffering earth who's, upon whose well-being we depend absolutely entirely for our lives, for our well-being, for our existence. When we forget that, when we begin to think, when we begin to think that we're separate, this is why we get into trouble and do stupid things like moving the science center down to the waterfront, right? We get into this, this stupidity, this arrogance and the, out of this ignorance that makes us stupid. So to be intelligent, we have to acknowledge the land herself, which means we need to acknowledge the water because we are mostly water and we are connected through water to the land, to each other, to the entire world because the water that we're connected with is the water, is the, the, the water in the veins of our body that nourish every cell is the same water that goes through the rivers and the lakes and the oceans that nourish every being on this earth. And through the evaporation and the atmospheric rivers that move the water around the planet, we are all connected. And we're connected to the air, the air that we breathe. The, breathe that, the, the air that we breathe out is breathed in by the trees as soon as they get some leaves on them. And the grass. And the, the air that the grass breathes out is what we breathe in. And we're always in harmony and balance. And this air has been around the world so many times that the air that we breathe in could have been breathed out by an animal or a plant 20,000 years ago on the other side of the world, and it's the same air. We are all connected. We are connected through the earth. We're connected through the air, through the water. And we are fire. The fire of passion that's in our hearts that's brought us here is the same fire that, that comes from the sun, the sun that provides all the energy for everything we need is the fire, the fire of passion, the fire of the sun, the fire that keeps us warm around the campfire. This is all connection. We are all connected. We are all one. And there's no way around it. We can't escape that. Unless you're really stupid and you want to move the science center to somewhere else. But it takes work to be stupid. So let's relax and enjoy the sunshine that's provided for us absolutely free. There's no collection booth. There's no slot machine or anything. It's free. Let's enjoy it. All my relations. Naganagana. That's an Anishinaabe word for all my relations. We can all say that. Naganagana. All my relations. In either language. Oh, I forgot the people. Yes, we should, we should acknowledge the people here. People that for thousands and thousands of years, like we think 100 years is a long time. Well, for, imagine 10, 15,000 years of continuous oral history. People have been on this land who learned up to observe the land, to become the land, to care for the land in a way that's sustainable. We managed to wreck it in 200 years, and they managed to keep it for 10,000 years. Let's think about that. The Wendat, the Haudenosaunee, particularly the Senecas that were here, and the current rights holders for this land through Treaty 13, the Mississaugas of the Credit River, they're still here, and they know what we're doing. Thank you, David. That was, uh, that was quite inspiring. Uh, sometimes our uh, land acknowledgements are, are kind of rote, and they lose some meaning. But if you know David, that it, his speech came from the heart and means something to all of us. Uh, we're going to get into the agenda right now. The first one to speak for us is, is uh, uh, Ward 11 Councillor Diane Sachs. And um, she will uh, represent uh, this park in the community. So thank you, Diane. Thank you very much. And thank you. Welcome, everybody, to my ward, the most beautiful University of Rosedale, absolutely the best ward in the city. Um, the, this attack by the Ford government on the Science Center isn't just one thing by itself. It's part of a coordinated attack by this premier and his government on science and what we learn from science. 
is he's not just talking about moving the science center, let's remember, he's talking about dramatically downsizing it, reducing the amount of science education, when we need more science education. And what are some of the key things that science education teaches us should be the top priority, a top priority in Ontario right now? Climate change, right? It's going to change everything, for, especially for young people. And this is the Premier who denies climate change, who does everything against it, who called climate deniers to be their expert witnesses at the court, who've done everything that they can to prevent this province from doing what we need to do to deal with what scientists tell us is the largest issue facing is also biodiversity collapse. So in the teeth of all of that, what does he want to do? He wants to destroy one of our beautiful heritage buildings and put housing in a floodplain in a river valley where it will flood. Did, does anybody here heard of Hurricane Hazel? Yeah. All right. What did we learn from Hurricane Hazel? Don't put housing in a river valley in a floodplain because when the water comes, there's nowhere to go. So this is one piece of a thorough attack. The other thing we know about Ford, aside from the fact that his first instinct is always wrong, and his proposals are always bad for Toronto, pretty consistently. But we've also learned about him that if there is strong public opposition and if he gets booed in public, what happens? He backtracks again. And this is an occasion where we need to embarrass him. We need to show that the public is against him. We need to prevent him from using the destruction of a large part of the science center as a loincloth for covering up his destruction of Ontario Place and privatizing our waterfront, right? Every piece of this is bad for Toronto. So we need to stand up, we need to stand up together, we need to stand up and say so, and we need to do it loudly and often. Thank you very much, everybody, and thank you so much. To No, it's the same thing with Discover IT. It fell apart because it was not funded. So, you know, this is what's going on. I was on the last mail campaign, and, and honest to God, it was like riding in a bucket of bulls, screeching the whole way. I took videos of it. You know, it's because of the lack of funding. And if Ontario Place gets moved, uh, or, or Zion Center gets moved to Ontario Place, Doug Ford will cut funding because he'll combine them together and pretend he's giving you more money when they'll be actually given less money than if he was giving the money into two separate sites. Well, thank you. That's spoken with a lot of passion. And you know what? I think everybody's out here because they share that same passion. So thank you. Thank you for supporting, uh, the, keeping the Science Centre on Don Mills Road and for the redevelopment of the West Island of Ontario Place as well because they are connected. And Diane brought up, uh, made a good point about the environment. Uh, the, the Science Centre was constructed to last 250 years. Raymond Moriyama, uh, the designer and architect, uh, his commission from from uh, Premier Robarts, who happened to be a conservative, <laughs> that's pretty cool, uh, to last 250 years and he wanted it out of concrete. That's 54 years of imbe embedded carbon. 250 years of embedded carbon. Carbon happens to be one of the most, uh, the building materials happen to be one of the most uh, carbon unfriendly uh, products that we, that we produce in the world, kind of like beef. Uh, so uh, if we build a new science center, we're actually extracting, we're taking all that science, uh, all that uh, carbon uh, out of the ground and putting it in a new building, and then we're going to release all the carbon from 54 years ago. Environmentally, it does not make any sense. And also, you know, as a ravine advocate first and foremost, it would leave this ugly, ugly scar on the West On, uh, the West On Parklands. So, as we move forward, uh, we've got, a, I said, full agenda. Councillor uh, Josh Matlow from St. Paul's, a neighbor here, is, is here. And uh, Josh has been a supporter right from the very start. And we certainly appreciate all his efforts. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Let's hear it for Save Ontario Science Center. This group, this group has been our champions in Thumbington Park and across the city. And also a shout out to Ontario Place for All, who together 
have been leading the efforts to push back on the Ford government's challenge to our natural environment, to our heritage, and to two beloved places that we hold dear here in the city of Toronto and for everyone across the province of Ontario. But there's a reason why we're here at Christie Pitts, isn't it? It's Flemington Park, but it's not just Flemington Park that values the Ontario Science Centre. Flemington Park has relied on the Science Centre for years for opportunities for employment, for their youth to have learning opportunities. It's a very beautiful and important cultural hub in the heart of the northern part of our city. But it's also a place that no matter if you live at Steeles, near the Humber, near the Rouge, or right here near Christie Pitts, the Ontario Science Centre is a place that we care about and we are willing to fight to protect. It's a place that my parents took me when I was a kid, where I learned so much and found a love of science and our natural environment. It's a place that I bring my 11-year-old daughter to, Molly, as well, and she's finding the same love. And it's a place that I want all of our kids to be able to go to in the future. This is being led by every neighborhood, but also every generation. You see people here who are older adults, you see kids, you see youth leading the fights, and I can tell you on behalf of so many of our colleagues at City Hall, we are with you, we support you, and we will be there every step of the way, pushing back on Doug Ford and his deceitful plan to destroy Ontario Place, to destroy our waterfront, and to remove the Ontario Science Centre from where it belongs, right in the heart of Flemington Park. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. That was uh, that was terrific. That was terrific. It, it, you know, it, it's kids. We're here. It was a question that came up a number of times on social media. Why are you at Christie Pitts Park? It's nowhere near the Science Center. It's worth the drive or transit or the or the beautiful bike lane. It's separated bike lane as well. So uh, yeah, we need to look after vo vulnerable road users. So we're here because we've been at the science, we've had three events at the Science Center, we've been in Flemington Park, we've been in Thorncliffe Park, we've been in my community of, of uh, Long Riverdale Park East, we've been to uh, East to East Lynn Park, uh, again, on the subway and on the bike lane. But we wanted to share this, we wanted to take the show on the road, because not everybody wants to travel across the city, and every community is concerned, and every con community needs to have their voice heard as well, because one thing that all the different people here share is the solidarity of the Science Center needs to uh, needs to remain where it is, and let's not destroy the West Island of Ontario place. Yeah. Representing the uh, National Association of Japanese Canadians is Lynn, Lynn Deutsch, uh, Kobayashi. So thank you, Lynn. Uh, thanks everyone for coming out on this beautiful day. I'm sure you had a few other things you could be doing. So I am Linda Kobayashi. I'm the president of the National Association of Japanese Canadians, a Toronto chapter. And our organization was founded in 1947 here in Toronto. And we uh, are an advocacy organization for Japanese Canadians. And we're known for uh, negotiating the 1988 redress agreement, an apology from the Canadian government. So I'm here today. I know, you know, people are eloquently speaking about all the neighborhood issues around Ontario Place and Science Centre, so I will leave that to others. But I am speaking because we wish to see Raymond Moriyama's legacy preserved. <laughs> and these past two years have seen Moriyama design structures that are important to the Japanese Canadians in Toronto at risk. The original cultural center at 123 Winford Drive, designed by Moriyama, is about to be smothered by two condo towers of 48 stories and 50 plus stories. So we're involved in an Ontario Land Tribunal case, which, uh, you know, it's been made easier for developers to, you know, win that process to ensure that its integrity is kept. Uh, we are also um, involved, we were involved with the um, Japanese Canadian Centennial Bell at Temp uh, Japanese Canadian Centennial Bell at Ontario Place. So uh, we at 
started these negotiations about two years ago and we really didn't feel we felt that our only choice was to have it moved and not you know destroyed so there has been an arrangement to it has been dismantled to make way for a private spa so obviously this was not our first choice so Moriyama's life mirrors the hardships of Japanese Canadians. He and many of our families went from exile to overcome many obstacles to achieve excellence. And his story is concretely embodied, embodied, embodied in his architectural legacy, literally and figuratively. <laughs> Japanese Canadians were not welcome to the city of Toronto in 1940s. In 1942, and I hope some city councillors are listening here, Toronto banned Japanese Canadians from the city, and that's why my family ended up in Montreal when we had to move, they had to move east from BC. We had um, actually were on the verge of a, an apology from the uh, Tory uh, administration, but substantive conversation about this has yet to be uh, come, so we're waiting for that. So the architectural community has been vocal in articulating the brilliance of Moriyama's architecture of inclusion. The Japanese Canadian community were so proud of their architect heroes Ontario Science Centre creation. Now at the moment, the, the story reads from exile to excellence to erasure. Now when Moriyama graduated from high school, his family had no money. His classmates were receiving material gifts. His dad handed him an envelope which he briefly hoped might be money but instead it was a handwritten note in calligraphy from his dad to say to him, God's temple of eternity, into God's temple of eternity, drive a nail of gold. So Moriyama has fulfilled his father's words. His oeuvre is worthy of UNESCO World Heritage designation, just like um, uh, other architects. I, th I hope the city will pursue this. I think this is great for the city. It's great for the province. Now, in addition to the concerns about moving the Science Centre, which others will and have given voice to, I ask the province to think deeply about this larger context and significance of the Ontario Science Centre. In discussing the fate of the Japanese-Canadian Centennial Temple Bell, which was a gift of reconciliation from our community, fully funded by our community, in 1977, we were thrown cliches about the inevitability of change. Well, the Temple Bell stood for 46 years, which is less than half of the 95 years for the lease to a private spa company. I mean, the inevitability of change. So I asked Doug Ford and the government to, not to let Moriyama's legacy end in erasure. It's not and too late to change this unfortunate trajectory. Japanese Canadians and all people of Ontario deserve better. Thank you. Well, thank you, Lynn. To pick up on uh, the extraordinary design and forethought of, of Raymond Moriyama, when he was commissioned by Premier Robarts it was to make a world-class institution, a world-class institution. It had to be interactive, it had to be immersive, it had to be educational, it had to produce its own exhibits. It also had to be fun. And that's why this couldn't be replicated anywhere else. It was purpose-built as a science, a science center for all those reasons. And, you know, you think about, well, we could retrofit a building Whoever's been there, just take a look and use your imagination and try to figure out, hmm, how would this become a long-term care housing? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know. How would, it, how would it work for a, a university? How would it work for a hospital? You see, it doesn't, it doesn't fit. It's an educational institution that happens to be a lot of fun. And you, I keep keeping back on that because I only have good memories. But nostalgia isn't a reason to keep something. The, key, the reason is that it's going to cost taxpayers four to five hundred million dollars that's unnecessary. And there isn't any reason we cannot refurbish the, uh, the present 
the present building and take care of the deferred maintenance cost, the deferred maintenance, which is less than half of the cost of building something new. So we have the environmental aspect, and then we have the, the cost aspect. And here's something else, is why don't we turn it into a world-class showcase for green re retrofitting? A green roof, an urban farm uh, on the roof. It's 550,000 square feet. That's a lot of roof. Uh, how about if we, uh, the, the, the systems are all brought up to 2024 and maybe even uh, achieve LEED standards. This is, this is all can be done. This could all be done. So besides our city councilors, our MPPs, our MPs, because the federal money, the federal government uh, has climate initiatives, we need to work this out to, okay, let's invest in the science center, a full size science center, keep it properly funded so we don't have a deferred maintenance backlog, and at the same time, we can make it even better. So, Kristen Longdam is next to speak for us, and we welcome her to Christy Pitts. Thank you very much, Floyd, and welcome to all of you. It is an absolute honor to be here with you today on this particular, in, in this particular space because Christy Pitts has been, as you many of you know, the site of many historical rallies. And I'm, light, I'm happy to say that we're adding this one to the roster. You know, we have a remarkable city, but the city is remarkable largely because of the citizens and the cultural institutions that the citizens of the city have helped build. The country is one that is at the grip of where we see a crossroad. Do we want to tear things down simply because it's old? Because that's what's happening. And do we want to leave behind citizens from core decision making no. on assets and, and cultural assets that actually belong to them? The answer is absolutely no. Absolutely no. I'll tell you what we should say yes to, and I think you'll agree. We should say yes to an Ontario Science Centre that is properly funded, properly invested in, and also programmed for the future so that our generation of kids today can have the experience that you and I had when we were able to go to the Science Centre, when it was funded and well run. We're in the grips of a housing crisis right now, and we have heard a lot about dem evictions. This is when a property owner will deliberately neglect a property to the point that they say, you know what, we can't maintain it anymore. It's too expensive. And in some ways, the Ford government is doing exactly that here, trampling on the remarkable legacy of Raymond Moriyama, one of the most esteemed Canadian architects that has ever come out of this country. And how dare he do that to the Japanese Canadian community, but also to Canadians. This is our history. And we own this, not Doug Ford exclusively. So a year ago, when he released his plan, and said, oh, by the way, we're moving the Ontario Science Centre without a peep and a word to anybody else. It was never discussed during their election pro program and their platform, and you're just going to all accept it. Well, it's been very clear that you are not going to sit idly by, and it's been very clear because the citizens of Toronto, Ontario, are rising up and speaking out. We have seen so much loss of our culture and history in this city as we rush towards modernity. But let's think about what that means. If we don't know who we are, because we're so busy tearing things down, we won't know where we came from. And Anne Kobayashi from the National Association of Japanese Canadian just gave us a snapshot of that history that is so rich that we have that we've been privileged to inherit. And I don't think that we can let that go without a fight. Raymond Moriyama and the community of architects and designers who led that design of the Ontario Science Centre, plus the scientists who all participated in giving that feedback, said that was the location. 
So despite the claims by the most corrupt government in the history of Ontario, that they have consulted you, that they've done their value assessments, they have done none of those things. None of those things. So it is going to be our fight, this generation's fight, so we can support the next generation of scientists because that's what this is going to be about. It's not just about the preservation of our waterfront and the good work that Ontario Place for All is doing. And I want to say thank you to them for linking arms with Save the Ontario Science Centre, this particular group, because you're building a very powerful citizen coalition, a coalition that is not going to back down, that is going to stand up to corruption, and that's going to say no to Doug Ford. And yes, yes to history, yes to science, and yes to working together to build the Ontario that includes everyone. I want to conclude by saying thank you. Thank you to all of you who are here today, who are continuing this fight. I also want to say thank you to the folks behind me, but to the organizers, save the Science Centre, Ontario Science Centre. <laughs> Floyd Ruskin, as many of you know, plus all his many, many volunteers, he has been a champion for the ravines, and for the trail system, and for the natural ecology of Ontario for years. And it is not easy work. You don't get paid, do you? No. But you do it with your time and effort and everybody else who's ever come out with him to actually clean up the dawn. He does that work because he loves our province and our city. And I wanna say, not only are we working to save the Ontario Science Centre, for the Moriyama family, for the, for the Japanese Canadian community, for Ontarians. But I also want to dedicate our work here and everybody's work here to Floyd and this group of remarkable volunteers because you've led this fight and we're going to stand with you every step of the way until we win. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Uh, uh, you know what? <laughs> uh, I thought that I thought that was I thought that was uh, it was more than I expected, but I just have to. I don't do this alone. Uh, Jason Ash, who's standing over there, is co-chair and probably does more than I do, but I, but I hate to admit it. So, but uh, Jason, wave to the people. You know, Kristen brought up the uh, uh, the Auditor General's report, and besides the fact that the government lied about the, the cost of refurbishing, yeah, refurbishing the Science Center, they made a, a really egregious mistake. They never consulted with the City of Toronto. The City of Toronto owns the land where 40% uh, of the Science Center sits. The other 60% is the Toronto Region Conservation Authority. They never, they, never, <laughs> they never consulted with the GTA school boards. And we have representatives of the teachers unions here today. They never consulted. Guess what? 25% of Ontario Science Center attendance is school field trips. Who here has never been on a school field trip to the Science Center, either as a kid or as a parent or as a grandparent? Never. Everybody, everyone has, right? Well. The Science Center is pretty cool, but I really got, you know, sometimes getting on that bus with the kid with the tuna fish sandwich is a lot of fun. <laughs> or maybe it's not. The other thing that the Ford government never did was consult with the community. The community of Flemington Park. The community of Thorncliffe Park. The nearby community of Don Mills Road and just across the ravine, and I see Jeff here, of, of Leeside as well. There's an entire community, like all these people that should have had at least a say. So, Save Ontario Science Center, it's not like the government. We look for consultation. We wanted the Minister, uh, the minister of Infrastructure, Kinga Sarma, to come. Kinga, raise your hand, where are you? Kinga! Kinga! I guess consultation is not in the Ford playbook. So, uh, next, because uh, we all, uh, uh, Kristen also mentioned uh, kids, and you know what? Uh, we make it really exciting. I, this, 
I'm going to introduce this, uh, this young lady, this young woman to you. Her name is Arush, Arushi Nath, and she's the winner of the 2023 Canada Wide Science Fair. She had the second prize in European Union Young Scientist Contest. And Arushi also gave a speech at the Science Center. She was asked to give the speech at the Science Center uh, on uh, women and girls in science. Uh, exhibition. So uh, we can speak passionately, but I'm going to leave it to Arushi. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Bonjour. I hope you guys are all doing well, and j'espère que vous allez tout bien. Uh, my name's Arushi, and I'm a grade nine student from here in Toronto, and I'm a proud member of the Ontario Science Center. My father first bought a family pass to the Ontario Science Centre when we immigrated to Canada 14 years ago. Combined with the weekend pass of the TDC, it was a great deal that allowed us to visit the Ontario Science Centre repeatedly. I remember my dad taking me to the Science Centre every week on Saturdays and sometimes even Sundays. It felt like coming home, a safe place where I belonged. Every visit was a full day visit. I knew all the right places to go. The planetarium for the astronomy shows, the Van de Graaff generator for the hair raising displays, the tropical garden with all the butterflies, and my personal favorite, the kids play area. I love meeting all the friendly Ontario Science Center staff, wearing their white coats, always had science puzzles in their hands, and they loved interacting with children and answering all of our questions. It was the only place, the Ontario Science Center, where asking great questions was celebrated more than just knowing the right answers. There are Ontario Science Center memories in everyone's lives. And the Ontario Science Center set me in the path of following my curiosity, and I developed a strong love for astronomy. Ontario Science Center is the place where I met my first astronaut, the place where I met a Nobel Prize winner. The place where I learned about the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. The place where I realized women can be scientists, engineers, and astronauts. It's the place I learned it's okay to be excited and passionate about science. I started creating my own science projects and presenting them in local science fairs. Each year, my project would go more complex as I learned new skills. I was able to win the top award at the Canada Wide Science Fair twice in both 2022 and 2023 for a project on asteroid and planetary defense. This gave me the opportunity to represent Canada internationally at the 2023 European Union Contest for Young Scientists in Belgium, where I got to win the second prize. And for all of this, a huge credit goes to the Ontario Science Centre, which kept my passion for science, my curiosity, and my will to ask questions alive. <laughs> Students make up 25% of the visitors to the Ontario Science Centre, but the government chose not to consult the kids, not to consult the students, not to consult the teachers, and not to consult the school boards. Every school year, I visit the science center, whether it's for a geology class, physics class, or just a fun outing. Trips to the science center is what brought us together. I have attended birthday parties, slept overnight, gone on play dates, and even spoken at the Ontario Science Center. You do not destroy an intergenerational public asset to, the asset to justify destroying another intergenerational asset, the Ontario Place. My heart goes out to the growing number of immigrant families moving to Canada and Toronto. Their kids need to experience what I experienced at the Ontario Science Centre. We need to open up more science centers and everywhere and improve the existing ones and not underfund them and then reduce them to half their size. 
We need to fund them, invest in them, because they will turn these kids and students into the future engineers, doctors, artists, and even future policymakers. The fight to save our public spaces is one worth fighting for. I'm writing letters to editors, signing petitions, meeting local and provincial policymakers, and sharing information with my classmates. I am confident we can win this fight and make the Ontario government reverse its misguided decision. I urge you all to keep protesting and thank you for supporting the future and visions of the youth of Toronto. Thank you. You know, if Arushi represents uh, uh, our next generation, I think we'll be a lot better than we are today. That was phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal, and thank you. No, you know, uh, every, we all know that uh, Ontario has an affordable, accessible, inclusive housing problem. And it was suggested by, uh, in early April, by then mayoral candidate uh, Anna Bailao, oh, this would be a great place to, uh, to, to build housing. And it was picked up the week later by Doug Ford. But none of them had ever visited, never been in the community. Never, I, we know that they never spoke to anybody in the community. They looked at a map and say, oh yeah, we can put housing here. Not recognizing that 60% was in a river valley. And as Toronto Region Conservation Authority said, not suitable for housing. Let's face it, 50 years of housing talk. Yeah. Poverty, which is the real issue. And so as we, as we. Housing has done nothing to alleviate homelessness anywhere in Canada. So, I'm sorry, but it is. Okay, uh, we all agree. We all totally agree. But here, you know what? What they didn't recognize is that there's over 17,000 17, housing units in the Don Mills and Eglinton area already in the pipeline, with another 10,000 housing units along uh, Eglinton. How oh, about the Golden Mile from from Winford over to the Golden through the Golden Mile? So, not every Every cultural institution should be subject to, oh, it's a good place to build, to build housing. I look at the, uh, the ROM, which sits right at the intersection of line one and line two. Wouldn't it be great? Why don't we put 90 stories, use the, uh, the ROM building as the podium, put 90 stories on top of it. It's, it's right on mass transit. Look, it's, it's perfect location. Uh, though I don't believe that the folks in York, uh, Yorkville would actually appreciate that too much, but it's also a dumb idea. It's a dumb idea. And so uh, the land isn't sort of, here's the other thing, and they, they should have looked at their own Ontario line map. The Fleming and Park station, for, uh, it will be built in the parking lot, the south parking lot. So they're not really, they're getting a tiny fraction and destroying a cultural institution. And as we move on to cultural institution, I want to introduce uh, Patricia Milne from, I just got to get it right here, Architectural Conservancy of Ontario. Patricia. Thank you, Floyd. Uh, I'm from ACO, the Toronto branch, and we're extremely worried about our precious science centre. It, right now it's a listed building. It has, does not have heritage status. At the end of this year, under Bill 23, listed buildings are gonna lose all status whatsoever, so it's extremely at risk. You know, the history of the building itself is fantastic. We've talked about Raymond Moriyama. It's amazing that he was selected for the project. There was a short list of 11 architects, and they wanted someone new that could invent a new type of museum that had never been done before in Canada, and what he came up with became a template for museums around the world. And the, the museum in the Science Centre is so specific to its site. It was designed to interact with the site, the way the building follows the levels down from the tableland down into the valley. The, one of the key components of that is the pedestrian bridge, which was closed in 2022. The bridge itself was an award-winning project. Moriyama himself asked and requested and designed to have the bridge in that project so that visitors would engage with the landscape and the nature of the valley saying that science and nature could not be separated. 
Uh, I want to talk a bit about the selection of the site itself. It didn't. It wasn't happen chance. Uh, they looked at many sites around the city. Interestingly enough, you know, I've read hundreds of pages in the last few weeks. One of the sites that they studied was the exhibition place down at the lakefront, very close to where the new site is. And this was rejected in the 60s when there was no building down there that it was going to be too hard to get to. They picked a site that would have the best opportunities for visitors and employment, transit, highways, pedestrian and bike trails, and they, this is why they selected this site. It was thoroughly vetted. Um, I w when we go back to the heritage status, in 2003, the provincial government did their own study, their own heritage report on how important this building is. <laughs> There is one person in the government who actually can give the building a heritage designation, and that's Michael Ford. He has the ability as the minister to designate the building. So let's get the building designated and get the building protected. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. You know, most people see the, the Ontario Science Center from the Don Mills Road, from Don Mills Road. I have to be fortunate, uh, as somebody that spends a lot of time in ravines, to visit it from the other side. And you could see how much thought went into not only the, the, the building, but integrating the built form with the natural form of the ravine. Uh, there was so much of the, the texture of the ravine, the hillside, that was left, and we can still see it today. Mature trees that were protected so they would still be there 54 years later. They're still standing there. Um, and the uh, forethought to put that bridge across what well, turns out to be a lost creek without a name. <laughs> And, uh, you know, that still flows through there. It's uh, one short section where the children's wilderness uh, 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 outdoor area is, is the only place that, that that creek is daylighted, where you actually see water. It, it flows in a storm sewer south uh, to before it gets to the, to the science center. And then once again, it goes under the building in another sewer before it empties into the Don. But he incorporated this and left it there. On May 4th, now, we haven't published it yet, but on May 4th, uh, Lost Rivers Toronto will be uh, doing a uh, nature walk in support of the Science Centre. We won't be going in. We'll be walking around the building and taking in the natural features because it's phenomenal. We did one in December, now we're going to do one in May in the spring, and uh, it's, it's very popular, so um, it's, it's a totally different look, and there's a lot of history that goes on there. Uh, indigenous history, as well as uh, black history as well, which I'll leave that one to the, uh, to the walk. So, we're here co uh, partnering with our friends from Ontario Place for All, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it was happenstance or a bad government decision that put Ontario Science Centre into the equation at Ontario Place. Just poor decision making and arbitrary, totally arbitrary uh, to support not only developer donors, but also to support probably in that 95 year lease is somewhere uh, that the, the province has to provide another attraction. Well, I have Ferris wheel and merry-go-round are attractions. Our entire our Ontario Science Center is not an attraction. So, Doug, build a build a Ferris wheel in Etobicoke, please. No, front. I don't want it. And look what you know. He wanted a uh, Ferris wheel to Portland's. Look what we've got there. A new mouth to the Don. How do you like that? Wouldn't that be great with a giant Ferris wheel? And we're going to have uh, affordable housing as well. Put it in his backyard. I would love to put it in his backyard. I. Did I say backyard? I'd like to, never mind. Uh, <laughs> so, for Ontario Place for All, representing Ontario Place for All, is uh, Emmy Agulu, and uh, he's going to speak about our collaboration and the challenges to Ontario Place. Thank you so much. Friends, neighbors, and fellow advocates, my name is Emmy Agulu, and I'm a proud member of Ontario Place for All. And I stand before you today at this rally, not just as a voice against the redevelopment of Ontario Place, but as a testament to the power of community. Together, we are the force of reason, passion, and dedication 
to the cause of preserving the very essence of public spaces that every Ontarian knows. My journey with Ontario Place for All began with a simple yet profound realization. realization. The spaces we cherish, like Ontario Place and the Ontario Science Centre, are not just physical locations, but repositories of our shared memories, achievements and aspirations. There are places where curiosity sparked, where families and communities come together and where the seeds of our future are sown in the minds of our young learners. But when I learned of the plans to transform these public treasures into something unrecognizable, something that doesn't echo the inclusivity and accessibility that defines us, I knew that I had to take a stand, not just for me, but for all of us. We, as a community, have rallied together, driven by a shared vision that the heart of Ontario is its people and the public spaces that serve them. From Flemington Park to Thorncliffe Park to Ontario Place, our message has been clear. We will not stand idly by as the spaces that we cherish are threatened. That's right. You see, Save Ontario Science Centre has been at the forefront of this movement, advocating tirelessly to keep the Science Centre in its rightful home, serving all Ontarians. <laughs> Meanwhile, Ontario Place for All has scored a legal victory against the provincial government's attempts to bypass a full environmental assessment for the West Island redevelopment. But our work is far from over, I tell you. In this pivotal moment, should we just sit back as our cherished public spaces are commodified and privatized? No. Or do we rise as one voice, one force to safeguard the Ontario that belongs to us all? Yes. Will we let the memories and dreams forged in Ontario Place and the Ontario Science Centre be erased? No. Or will we fight to keep them alive for everyone now and into the future? Yes. So I call upon each of you empowered by our shared victories and united by our common purpose to raise your voices louder than ever. This is the moment to channel our collective energy into action. So let's now tell Premier Ford that our cities and our province deserve better. Yeah. Together, we can shape the future that we envision for Ontario a future where the Ontario Science Centre and Ontario Place remain beacons of learning, discovery and community for all. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Emmy, and thanks for all the supporters from Ontario Place for All. Um, no, yeah, just give me a minute. Um, yeah, thank you. That was, that was terrific. It's uh, arbitrary decision, decisions that will wind up co uh, costing Ontario taxpayers probably over a billion dollars unnecessarily. And um, that's something that is pretty well unacceptable uh, to, to all of us. We have so many challenges in health care, long-term care, education, uh, that the list, go, the list goes on, that we don't need to piss away money uh, relocating the Science Centre or uh, a, a total environmental disaster at Ontario Place. Uh, we had another speaker that was coming. It, um, MPP uh, Jill Andrews from... Uh, St. Paul's, just north here. Jill had an unfortunate accident last week um, at the Ontario Science Centre. Oh, no. Because the province refuses to pay to fix uh, the bridge that connects the two buildings, they run shuttle buses. They've been running shuttle buses for two years. The cost is up to about four million dollars now. And uh, so, uh, Dr. Jill, um, getting on the shuttle bus, uh, messed up her ankle. If that shuttle bus, if it would, the bridge had been repaired, well, the chances are she wouldn't have had that accident. So, uh, but she sent us a statement, and um, I don't know if my arm's long enough. Um, 
Anyway, friends, this is uh, Dr. Ant, uh, Dr. Jill Andrews. Friends, I'm so sorry I couldn't be with you at today's rally to save our Ontario Science Centre. While meeting with some of my fantastic St. Paul's constituents last Saturday at the Ontario Science Centre, I took a pretty nasty fall, headed to the shuttles on some uneven concrete and sustained a hamstring injury. I thought it was an ankle, but it's a hamstring. Uh, talk about irony. Um, and she said, feel free to insert a laugh here, so please. Uh, thank you. Uh, as I lay there on the ground, I couldn't help but think that Doug Ford should have fixed that dam bridge so he wouldn't need to take shuttle buses to the exhibitions. Yeah. I think she's a little annoyed, huh? We must continue to fight to save our Ontario Science Centre and its world-class scientific programming. Its value to Ontario's culture, heritage, education, its value to the 400, we didn't touch on this, but to the 400 employees, and I know some of them are, are here, uh, 400 employees of the Ontario Science Center, and if you build a half, this is, if you build a half-size OSC light at Ontario Place, with 18% less exhibition space, then you, you probably can deduct either 50% or 18%, depending if you use the government's math or you use uh, uh, real math, uh, that a lot of those people, unfortunately, will lose their positions and uh, families will suffer. So, uh, where was it? And also to uh, people who make, to the very, and to the very, Thorncliffe and Fleming and Park community where Ontario Science Centre is located conveniently near to the highway for easier access. Uh, when the uh, Eglinton Crosstown uh, finally opens, Diane, would you have a, a, an approximation? Uh, 2030, uh, 2040, uh, uh, June? I think, Phil, uh, I, think, I think Phil Verster's hardware is not working, more likely. Uh, but they give them a lot of money for messing it up, don't they? Well, anyway, there's a science center stop uh, uh, 200 meters from the, from the front door. Well, that's the accessible transit. The Ontario line, which is being built across the city, uh, will have its, Fleming, its terminus at the Fleming and Park uh, station, which is going to be, as I said earlier, built in right in the parking lot, 50 meters from the front door. Uh, I go up and down the Don Valley, either walking or, or biking. Uh, so you can get there pretty well any way you want. Jill has it from a car 12 minutes south of the 401, right on Arterial Road of, of Don, uh, Don Mills Road, and uh, five, not even five minutes from, uh, from the Don Valley Parkway. But it's also accessible to people that have to walk. There's a group in Thorncliffe Park called the Thorncliffe Park Autism Support Network, and they can walk kids over there. Some of them are mobility challenged, and they can make it there because it's, it's well, it'll probably take me 10 or 15 minutes. It takes them a lot longer. They arranged for a uh, field trip last year to, uh, to Ripley's. The school bus cost $600. This is a small community-based organization. They, you know, 600 bucks is a lot. Now, they use the Science Center frequently. It will be something out of their budget later on. So its location, suits it suits the communities as well. Uh, we cannot give up the fight. There is no business case for Doug Ford's plan to move the Science Center to Ontario Place. Well, there is. It's just not worth the paper that it would have been printed on. And it's not just you know, people like us saying that. The Ontario Auditor General value for money report said this is a piece of crap. Now I kind of paraphrased the piece of crap, but you get my idea. He was he's like, why did you bother? And the other thing is we waited eight months for it. Eight months. The minister kept saying, well, we're, we're double and triple checking. Well, you, they, doubling down, which I guess is what Doug Ford does, doesn't really work. So, you know, uh, here's the, the one more interesting fact on that one. The board of trustees, of the Ontario Science Centre and its board of trustees, not board of directors, trustees. Now, my understanding of trustees are entrusted with uh, both uh, financial and operational duties. They approved unanimously the plan overnight. It took our team five days, five people, right Kelly? To do a deep dive on it. It took the journalists longer than that. It took 
the Auditor General longer. How did the, oh, I forgot to mention, they're all afford appointee, patronage appointees. Now I know how it got approved overnight. He's not gonna tell me his password. It made it a little lot, lot easier. Doug, uh, Doug Ford did not consult with communities, not students, parents, school boards. No one on this decision, a decision he hid during his election campaign, a decision that will waste taxpayers' dollars only to make his $650 million in counting therm, private, for-profit, Austrian, luxury spa buddies richer. Doug Ford has disregarded environmental concerns and has done no environmental impact assessment at the proposed new site. In fact, Doug Ford cooked up Bill 154, New Deal for Toronto Act. Gotta love the lies that uh, baked into these government bill titles. So his government could be above the law, disregard accountability, and, and plow forward with his scheme to reward, uh, reward his backers. So who wants a half-size science center at double the cost at Ontario Place that might not even have science program uh, inside of it? Who wants to see many of the current Ontario science center workers displaced and jobless? Who wants to see Ontario Science Centre ripped away from a predominantly BIPOC community that is already under-resourced? Who wants to see the Ontario Science Centre created by renowned architect, Canadian architect Raymond Moriamut developed, demolished? No one. No one. No one. No one. No one. I can't hear you. Kinga. Kinga. Oh, she, she's still not here. Oh, oh. Anyway, no one does. No one does except Doug in there. Jason and I received so many, like, uh, so many responses on social media, and they run about 400 to one. That one person. So, is there no one? Yeah, there is one. But for every four, 400 of us, there's one, someone out, one out there that thinks it's a good idea. So it, it works from there. Yes, so let's keep the, uh, let's keep the heat on. Uh, thank you to me, uh, Jason, the entire Save Ontario Science Center movement, and allies for showing up today. Let's keep petition signing signatures coming. And I'd say one of the key, key features of uh, Save Ontario Science Center is our letter campaign. You see it on everything we do. It's on the poster. You can use the QR code. You can go to saveontariosciencecenter.com. Uh, the premier, then the minister both get every letter in their inbox. If you live in the city of, uh, the city of Toronto, your city council will receive a, a letter as well. If uh, your MPP will receive a letter, and out of 124 writings, we're uh, 123 out of 124 writings where people have said, "and don't move that," and that comes east to west across uh, across Ontario. So, uh, if you have not signed the letter to the premier and want to voice your opinion, please go to Save Ontario Science Center, Save Science Center .com, Ontario's not in there, and and sign the letter and share it with your friends. And something that actually works really well, if they live outside the city, if they live in Timmins, or Kirkland Lake, or or Windsor. Or, or Kingston. You know, when you get stuff from outside the city, it has much more of an impact than uh, us lefty, liberal, uh, you know, uh, environmental people that care about stuff. So, uh, also, we've actually, uh, I just want a, a, a vote here. Um, we just found out through a Freedom of Information Act that the new Science Center will be called the Doug Ford Center for Sciencey Stuff. Okay. No, no, no more. <laughs> well, if we, could, if we could need a stadium after, after, never mind. So, um, we want to make a lot of noise for a recording right now, right? Right, Jim? Yeah, we're making a record. We're making a, Jim, we, have to, we, we don't make records anymore. <laughs> we make recordings. So, is everybody here loud? Anybody loud? I know I am. Everybody got a whistle? So, on the count of three... Oh, I just, just want to introduce it. My name is Jim. I'm here with the Toronto Education Workers. And, uh, you know, we have been uh, just uh, last week, we, or earlier this week, we were dealing with uh, 
Doug's budget. So with the Toronto District School Boards, one of the things they were doing was cutting the uh, outdoor education programs and a lot of trips. So I guess that's uh, Doug's way of uh, slowing down traffic uh, to make the numbers look bad at Ontario Place or at the Science Centre is by uh, not uh, funding trips to the Science Centre. Well, edu education is not important to our government, else we wouldn't have a minister named uh, Mr. Lecce. So it's, uh, I, I always wonder about that. How you get someone who had a, a private school uh, education as being a public uh, minister of, of education. So we're going to get some noise, Jim. Yeah, so we're going to play a track, and I need to have your best singing voices. It goes like this. I put that in Doug Ford's email. Yeah. I got a better place for it. So, uh, we're pretty well wrapped up. I want to say thank you to, to Jim and to the education workers and to, let me say thank you, uh, education, OPSU, Brian Chain from OPSU. Uh, we're a small grassroots organization and uh, support from uh, community, from MPPs, from local councillors and from uh, People that recognize the importance of keeping the Ontario Science Centre in its present location and properly funding the long-term deferred maintenance. So thank you to all of those. Thank you to everybody that's come out here as well. We got a nice day. Yeah. We've had a couple of these in the rain. This is a lot. This is a lot nicer. And so, uh, but it's everybody's voice. Please, savesciencecenter.com, share it with your friends, share it with your uh, family, share it with your neighbors, uh, even share it with the guy down the street that you don't like. Uh, one more thing from Diane Sachs. Yeah, thanks very much, everybody. For everybody from Ward 11, just three upcoming things I want you to know about. We have two environment days this spring, one May 12th at Central Tech, one's June 23rd at Fred Hamilton. Bring all your hazardous waste, electronic waste, leftover textiles, pick up free compost, and we're gonna have free trees this year for the very first time. And we'll be right here having a spring spectacular in Christie Pitts, the afternoon of May 26th. Hope to see you all there, thank you. Uh, uh, probably Councillor Sachs uh, newsletter and social media. Thank you. Is that, is that right? Okay. Well, uh, unless somebody has something to say, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. And my friends over there know that that takes a lot for me to say I'm done talking. Yeah, they're laughing over here. So thank you all for coming. Have a, a, a safe trip home and share uh, your, your objections to moving the Ontario Science Center. Yay!